Soil Analysis Model Training. This is the data set that we will use to train a machine learning model. This data set contains information about different kinds of soil. Here we have the nitrogen content, phosphorus content, potassium content, the pH, and some other elements present in the soil. Basing it here, we will train our machine learning model to predict whether or not the given soil is fertile. So you can download the data set from here. Once you have downloaded the data set, this is the folder where I placed all the important files for training the model. There are the requirements for TXT file. This is basically all the dependency that we will need to install in order to train the model and run the back end of our application. In the model training folder, I have this notebook where we will write the code to train the model. In the data folder, you see this file, dataset1.csv, which is basically the CSV file. We will obtain this after downloading the dataset from Kaggle. This is the sensor underscore data dot JSON file, which basically contains the simulated data from an IoT device. You will be provided with this data dot JSON file, so you don't need to worry. Now we can simply do this. First, we open a terminal in this folder, sorry, not in this folder, but rather where we have the requirements for TXT file. Let me open the terminal here. I can first create a conda environment in order to install all the dependencies. So I have already done it here. I will simply activate the environment. So let's put conda activate. The name of my conda environment is soil analysis. If you want to create one, it is very easy to do so. If you have installed conda on your system, you just need to write the command conda create minus n soil analysis. One important thing is that I've specified the Python version to be 3.9. That is because we need Python version to be 3.9 or greater for the LLM part of our back end. This is why we use Python version 3.9 here. Okay? This is how you can create the Conda environment. In order to activate it, you can simply type the command Conda activate soil analysis. Now I can install all the requirements using the command pip install minus r requirements dot txt this will install all the dependencies required for training the model we'll also provide the requirements to a txt file now i can simply close this and open this notebook in my vs code this is the notebook here you can see the data folder that contains the csv file for the data set on which we are going to train the model this is the notebook that we're going to work with. First of all, we will need to select a kernel. Let's choose the Python environment. Then let me search the soil analysis environment that I have created. Let's select this. Once done, we will simply run this first cell to ignore the warnings. We just want the output of all these cells to be clean. That is why I'm ignoring the warnings. Now we will import our data set. We load the data set using pandas. Next, we will import pandas as pd. Then we will give the file path, which should be in this data folder. From here, I can copy the path. OK. Then I can simply read the CSV file using the command pd. Read CSV file and parse the file path. Afterwards, we will be able to display the initial rows of the data set. Let's do this. As you can see, we have around 13 columns and several rows. So let's first see a quick summary of this data set. Let's continue. We can do this using the df.describe function. We can see how the data set looks like. As you can see here, we have 880 rows for each column. And we have the main values and the standard deviation values for each of them. You will also notice here that we have the maximum value for the output, which is 2, and the minimum value is 0. The output contains three categories, 0, 1, and 2. 0 being less fertile, 1 being fertile, and 2 being highly fertile. Now let's see if we have any missing values in our data set. Here, the missing values is equal to df.isNull.sum. Now I can display the missing values. Here you can see that none of the columns have any missing values. This means that we do not have to worry about cleaning the data set since 
there are no values. Now, we can see the correlation matrix quickly to see the kind of features that we are working with. For that, I will import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. Also, I will import Seaborn as SNS, and the correlation matrix is going to be df.corr function. Now I can simply plot this and create a heat map, which will take the correlation matrix and will set the annotations to true. So let's give it a title plt.title correlation matrix. You can do plt.show. Here you can see the correlation among the different features. Let me use a different color scheme for the correlation matrix. Let's do cool warm. So this looks better. As you can see, the blue color reflects that there is a very low correlation between the features. The red color tells us that there is a high correlation. Most of the features are not highly correlated with each other. This means that we have to look at almost all the features to get a perfect sense of the data and how they impact the fertility of the soil. As we can see, all of the features are very important since there's really no correlation among the features themselves. We can say that they are linearly independent, but of course, they have some correlation with the output for most of the features. Now we can check the class distribution for this data set. Let me quickly plot that. Let's create a new figure. Let me adjust the size of this figure to 8 by 6. We will also make a count plot where the x-axis will have the output variable, the output feature, and the data is the data frame that we carried. The plt.title will be distribution of output. Let's show it. Now you can see that we have around 400 instances of very less fertile soil and around slightly more than 400 instances of fertile soil, but very few instances of highly fertile soil. You can see here that highly fertile soil has very low representation in the data. So let's first work with this data since we have a very small amount of data. We can quickly see if the model is performing well or not and then decide if we need to do something about the class and balance. Okay, in order to train the machine learning model, we will first need to split into training and testing sets. So we will use SK, learn.model selection and import train test split. Of course, X is going to be the entire data frame except the output column. We will drop the output column by placing axis is equal to 1. We define that we are dropping along the column. We are dropping the output column and the rest of the data frame goes into X. And Y will be the output column. Now we can do the train test split. So let's put X train, X test, Y train, Y test will be trained as split on XY. The test size is 0.2, meaning that we are using 80% of the data for training and 20% for testing. Those at the random state do 42. Now let's put the shapes of these. Let me put X train, shape X, test dot shape, then let's output the white rain, cloud shape, and white test dot shape. Here we can see 704 rows in the training data set and the corresponding 704 crown tooth labels and 176 testing rows and their corresponding test labels. Now we will define our machine learning model. We will be using XGBoost. Let's put from XCBoost, import XCB classifier and from sklearn.metrics, import accuracy score and the model is equal to XCB classifier. Then we parse the random state, which is 42, and model fit X train, Y train. Then we will now get the predictions from the train model on the test data set. Now we will get the accuracy. Accuracy is equal to accuracy score Y, test Y, prediction, and the classification report as equal to classification report. Y test and Y prediction. So let's run this. Okay, name classification report is not defined. We will also have to import classification report. Okay, I think the model has been trained, so let's print out the accuracy and the classification reports. 
As you can see here, we have 88%, 88.63% accuracy, and this is the classification report. Here, we have this precision on class 0, recall, and the FL score. Similarly, for class 1 and for class 2, we can see the precision. For class 2 is good, but the recall and FL score are not that good. But since they are a bit underrepresented, and it's highly unlikely to come across the data and the data for that, we will just work with this model for now. Next step, we will have to save this model. We'll basically save this into a .bin file and in our back end. We will load these weights from the train model from the .bin file and then use that for inference. So we will do model.save model and I will store it as xgboost underscore model underscore soil dot bin. I will have to parse the name of the file in cores. So let's send this. Now we have this file right here and we have saved this model successfully. Now that we have trained our model, we can then build the back end of the application where we integrate this model with the large language model using Langchain. Then we will basically make Flask API to connect with the front end such that when we receive the data from the front end to the back end, we will first perform inference using this model. Then using prompt engineering, we will ask ChatGPT to prepare a response according to the given information.